Well, good morning. How are you? What a fantastic day. The old uh, watery sun just starting to make its way through the milky clouds. It's quite early in the morning actually. It's only 20 past 7. Which is weird for me. And it's about that's literally one hour before I'm literally an hour early. If literally is the sort of word you can use literally there. But I don't know whether it is, but either way, it still doesn't diminish the absolute amazingness of the fact that this is probably since I bought the practice one of the earliest times I've ever gone in and the reason is that I'm in a, in a situation very similar to when I bought the practice and that is that uh, what with the receptionist on gardening leave I am very actively hands-on in terms of organizing the practice systems how things work making sure that the banks reconcile invoices are paid and things like that. When I originally bought the practice in November 2015, I had to get in there because I didn't know how anything worked and I wanted to sort of try and make sure that everything was working properly and if anything didn't work I had to fix it and uh, now I've gone, I've gone, I've reverted to that because of the departure of the receptionist. I've sort of reverted back to that type where I'm ultimately responsible. It's just me and two nurses now, so, and I can't expect the nurses to know how the petty cash works or the, uh, I mean, they will do shortly, uh, or the uh, patient's balance, you know, tin and everything. So, uh, I'm having to just make sure that everything carries on, you know. And funnily enough, I don't mind that. I, I, I quite like a hands-on approach to the practice. And I know many people will say I'm completely mad. And that, uh, you know, it's the dentist's job to sit there fat, dumb and happy and make sure that the staff do everything. From reconciling the bank account up to the, uh, up to the, up to taking the x-rays. But, my instinct is not that. My instinct, if anything, is, is the opposite. My instinct is to, is to take a hands-on approach, and by which I don't mean micromanagement. I'm not, I've seen plenty of dentists who micromanage, and I don't do that. I'm very much hands-off when I give someone a job. I really don't intrude on them, and don't expect or want them really to, uh, to intrude on me. Um, you know, if you watch some of the early podcasts, you'll see I go on about uh, teleocratic management style, hands off, you know, uh, the dentist only doing what only the dentist can do. And I still firmly believe in that, but it's best summed up by <clears throat> the periods before I go on holiday, where um, <clears throat> if I go on holiday, and I literally, you know, I've got sort of a, a, a few bits in my inbox and I think to myself, right, okay, okay Derek, you're on holiday now. Um, you know, just down tools, have, have a couple of weeks off and then just pick it all up again when you come back. And I don't like doing that. What I like to do is I like to work until I've done everything. When I get to the point where I can't, could not do anything else, even if I was to stay at work, then is that is the time to go on holiday. And I know that uh, <coughs> I know that uh, I'm on I'm on holiday because I couldn't work even if I wanted to. And I have a far and of course the work's still piling up while I'm away, but the point is that I can't really do much about the work that piled up while I was away, while I'm away. Whereas I could have done something about the work that had piled up before I was away, before I was away. Quite possibly the most complicated sentence I've ever said. But uh, you'll get the idea. So, so when your practice is going through any period of change, whether it's a relocation or in my case a, a staffing change, I like to be at work and I like to have my finger on the pulse. 
and it's a good idea to have your finger on the pulse because your management decisions will be better if you are if you are the person for example that's looking at the lab bills so we've got no receptionist there for the invoices are coming in and instead of sort of typing them in and just arranging for them to be paid um, I'm looking at the invoices and I had I, for example I had a, an invoice from my denture technician for 280 pounds so I thought and it was by far and away the highest invoice so I looked at the patient and saw what they had done and they had a seven tooth chrome denture now the problem is uh, for that seven tooth chrome denture I think we charged about 699 pounds whereas if you're working on the rule of thumb which is three times the lab bill we should have been charging about 840 so we're 140 pounds light which is roughly half the lab bill on that job so well, I need to do two things one is first of all and the thing I did immediately was to adjust the price of our chromes um, which is not exactly easy because we charge them per tooth and, and per base so it's one base plus X teeth equals fee but that's just a case of that's a simple bit of math um, the other thing I've got to do is have a chat with a technician and not that I think that 240 or 280 is a lot for a, for a private chrome. Although, depending what he's charging, I mean, you know, even if he's charging 15, say 20 pounds an hour, that's 14 hours work on that. But 14 hours work, he's not, you know, it's difficult to justify that, isn't it? So, my suspicion is that he is marginally taking the piss because um, he's, you know, and they, they, they do push the lab bills if they think they can get away with it. If there's no competition, you know. But having said that, he is next door. So, you know, there is, he has got quite a lot of benefits from my point of view in that he does a lot of work, immediate turnaround, etc. But um, the other, uh, the other, um, know an, another lab bill on the same lab bill was 50 quid and that was for an immediate repair same day repair and you know he drops everything and does the repair and we get it back and the patient's very happy but again we're charging the patient 93 pounds or something for a same day repair and the lab bill is 50 now I know there's not really much there's no surgery element to that is there other than really just uh, uh, giving the giving the uh, denture to the technician although in that case there was because we had to check that it could be repositioned and and in fact I super glued it together so that I made sure that it was you know it was all done in the right uh, you know so that it didn't it wasn't put together wonky but um, but there is to a certain extent because you know I've got at the time I had, you know you've got receptions to pay you've got nurses to pay etc etc you've got the surgery cost the same whether you're doing a repair or brain surgery so don't you know don't underestimate the cost to you of doing that same day repair you know you've got the website to maintain you've got all this uh, inspection testing and compliance to make sure that this same day repair is is being handled in a surgery which is wiped down after every patient where the squares of plastic get stuck all over the place so um, I'm working on the basis that, uh, again, of uh, the yardstick or rule of thumb of three times the lab bill, with a 50 pound bill for a lab, uh, for, for a simple repair, you're looking at 150 pounds for a same day repair. Now, there I think you're, I mean, I, I've got a good case to go to the technician and say, look, if you're going to charge me 50 quid for doing this, I'm going to have to charge the patient uh, 150. And uh, they're just not, I'm just not going to do any at that price. So unless you put your price down, uh, we are not, I'm not going to get any done. Sorry, I'm being followed by a police car, so. 
we might, we've had a variety of things happen on this podcast and uh, getting arrested by the police is probably going to be the latest. No, he's not interested in me. Okay, so, so there you see that's funny because you know he's charged me 280 quid for this chrome and yeah the bill I'm going to have to go in and have a chat with him about is the 50 quid bill and the, the 50 quid and, and, the, and, and both of them I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't literally had to revert to typing in the lab bills directly uh, and would never have found out that our chromes are probably I mean I knew our chromes were underpriced I knew we were charging less but I thought that was because I'm drawing less out of the practice than most dentists expect to draw out but uh, it's in fact it's just because we are ser well not seriously but we're underestimating the our input costs our laboratory costs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know I'm going to have to look at all of these costs in, including the crown and bridge costs and sort of try and work out where things are, are, are okay and where things are wrong and that's all because I've gone back to I've reverted to a hands-on position and that's all because the, the receptionist had gone on gardening me and that's all because my gut feeling was that the problem was with reception that the the, the role of reception was was not working as it should and therefore making the role of reception redundant was 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 a gut feeling that's being borne out and it's being borne out in more ways than one because one of the problems we had was that we're not the surgery time is not being fully utilized or to put it in plain language we're just not as busy as we like to be and um, the recall system should be reasonably uh, responsive, relaxed, efficient, effective and we've got the software in place to do that, the, the Systems for Dentists does do that. We don't use their recall system because their recall system really consists of an email saying you, your reminder is you know, you, it's time for you to come in for your checkup. please contact us. And then possibly another couple of letters or uh, emails, SMSs, whatever, just saying, uh, we haven't heard from you, please contact us for your checkup. And that's their recall system. Now we don't want to use their recall system because we actually make patients appointments. We say to them, look, your recall is due in May, we've made you an appointment on the 3rd of May, whatever, two o'clock, please uh, ring to rebook, reschedule if that's not convenient. And I know from experience that that is by far and away the most, that produces the biggest response. You'll get a few patients say, no, please cancel this appointment, I found another dentist, or I don't wish to come back, or I don't wish to have a checkup this month, or I'm only going to come in once a year, but, but by far and away the majority of people will just say, oh, okay, you know. Some of them will say, no, I can't come on a Tuesday, that's when I work in London, can you put me on the Friday? In which case, it's literally just a case of dragging and dropping the appointment somewhere else and then, and then it automatically sends them out an email and an SMS saying your appointment has been changed and then that's all they need. It's all done by email and SMS. But um, that wasn't how it was being done. Um, what we, so what we do is we don't use their recall system, we just use their reminder system. So we make an appointment and then the system sends out an email saying uh, you've been made an appointment, this is your checkup, this is your recall appointment, you've been made an appointment on such and such a day. Um, and then we, we leave it to the system just to automatically remind them of the appointment that they've got. Okay. So once again, once I got this straight in my head, uh, the, the, the sort of the Chinese wall, between the recall system and the reminder system, I finally got everything straight. And it's the reminder system that we need to use and not the recall system. And they get uh, an email reminder when they um, when we make them the appointment and then two SMSs, one a week before and one a day before. Um, and then if they then don't come in, then, then they get charged. Uh, because these things do tell them that uh, they need to give us at least one day's notice uh, before 
let you know if they're going to cancel or change and uh, reschedule an appointment. So that's simple, and in fact, I stayed after work last night for about an hour and sent out all the May recalls, and that's in an hour. And the recalls were something that formerly the receptionist used to print out and, and then uh, personally email every single one with this big long disclaimer on the end and then ring them up and ask them and then ask them to confirm and if they didn't confirm ring them up and ask them to get back and confirm and the whole thing was just uh So, so, and then, so I'm satisfied, you know, that we've got the right number of recalls for May, which is proportionate to one twelfth of the number of the patients that we've got. And then, okay, so when, when you're not as busy as you'd like to be, then you start thinking again, what else can you do? Well, there's, there's a lot you can do. So the next thing I... Um, next thing I've you know I know for a fact that 40% of the treatment that we recommend is not taken up and we've now got a system where they can split their cost of their treatment over 10 months interest free we get they gouge us for 6% the finance company but the patient comes in and has the work done so it's it's 94% of something that we wouldn't normally get so you know we can't complain too much um, and let me just get this right. So, so we have got about two hundred and forty thousand pounds worth of work outstanding, and I could get this, pull this figure off the computer. And this is work that's been quoted but hasn't been completed. So that, that's 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 my annual turnover. <laughs> so. Never mind about the United States national debt going up £100 billion a month uh, and the moment they're mowing more than they make. I'm in the opposite situation. I could, I've could, i got a year's worth of work outstanding that could walk in the door any time. So the idea is to get all this work in. So <clears throat> obviously you're going to contact these patients who've, who basically have sort of they're sort of people have walked out without making appointments they they need work they've still got an open treatment an open course they've got treatment on that course which is, is uncompleted and yet they don't have an appointment and that's that's the gist of the report that you run to uh, produce the uh, or the query that you run to re produce the report and there's about 60 patients in this category and um, now some of them possibly just weren't closed because of a technicality um, but um, uh, I should imagine most of them are you know were shocked by what we found you know no, nobody ever I mean you can occasionally get a patient in and you might say you know you might say actually your teeth they say my teeth are terrible and you actually say well actually no your teeth aren't too bad um, so that is correct. But um, most, for most people, they come in thinking their teeth aren't too bad, and then you tell them that their teeth are, they've got a big problem. And it's compounded by the fact that the teeth never get better, do they? Never heal up. That whatever the situation was when they saw you last time, it's going to be the same or worse this time, isn't it? So, and uh, the fact that, you know, and the reason I people we all have this inbuilt ability to ignore things because if we didn't then we'd all be going around screaming about the fact that we're all going to die so we're, we're quite conveniently able to ignore the fact that we are all going to die uh, and we use this uh, inbuilt damping mechanism <laughs> to damp another bad news <laughs> such as the fact that you need a ton of work on your teeth by by saying oh, well they're not hurting you know so I'll, it is something that I can defer and the free credit the 10 months free interest free loan is something that I can use as a hook to contact these people because otherwise it might come across as a bit naggy but 
instead of saying, you know, like you really, you know, you walked out of here without making an appointment, are you ever going to fix your teeth? I can say, look, uh, you know, you've flagged up on our computer as an uncompleted course. Uh, just to let you know that we now do finance over 10 months interest free. So uh, whatever the cost was, divide it by 10. And if you can afford that per month, then you can actually have the work done. And for most amounts, you know, which which probably in the region of, I don't know, £5,000 would be a lot, say so two or £3,000, we're talking two, £300 a month now, that is your hook to, to get in touch. And then I'll say, look, uh, someone will ring you in the next sort of couple of days or weeks or something and, and just have a chat with you just to find out what's going on. You know, have you gone to another dentist? Have you, uh, do you decided that you're going to put it on hold? Are you, you know, <clears throat> should we have, you know, how can we close this course? Um, and, um, you know, what are your plans? And just have a chat with them. And I think that'll bring in quite a bit of work. It won't by any means bring in all of them, but I think it'll bring in, bring in appreciable, you know, like probably a five-figure sum. Uh, and that's without even uh, touching the, the vast database of patients who um, are overdue for their recalls. The simplest category, you know, did you know that you were supposed to come in for a checkup in, say, March, and, uh, and, you, and you didn't? So... Would you like to? Uh, would you like us to book an appointment? Those people we don't book appointments, uh, but we will get in touch with them. You know, so 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 I haven't even started those yet. So so um, so hands-on management in this case, I think, is going to solve a problem that we've had for a long time, and I think making the job of uh, receptionist redundant is indirectly is going to solve a problem that we've had for quite a long time, and it's a problem that really should have been solved a year ago. Uh, you know, or, or, or uh, and if this problem, these problems are not solved, you know, if you've got a member of staff who's not up to the job in terms of uh, realizing what's wrong and, and knowing how to fix it, then, and I don't mean just not having the knowledge, or, uh, but I mean just generally, innately, not having the ability to respond uh, in in an appropriate way, then, um, then. Uh, you have to you have to seize control you know you have to take charge you have to you have to uh you have to get get down and dirty get hands on get stuck in and <clears throat> and find out where the where the machines uh, going wrong and uh, and take the old spanner out of the works anyway i hope that's been helpful i'll let you um, i'll keep you up to date with the uh progress especially in terms of patient numbers and let you know um, what we've managed to do all right, it's a lovely day. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.